everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today we are going to return to my series where I examine some antique garments to you and we are going to specifically look at a couple of Victorian, possibly early Edwardian era capes. Now I know that Edna Mode was very against capes, but the Victorians and Edwardians were not. They loved capes and capes could come in lots of different shapes, lots of different decorations, different fabrics, different textures, all sorts of different capes were present in these eras. But when we're looking at the 1890s and 19 aughts, we are primarily looking at kind of like shoulder capes. So they would be shorter like this one right here and they would kind of be cut to accommodate those really really large sleeves of the 1890s and the early 1900s even because although the early 1900s didn't have like the huge leg of mutton sleeves that we're used to seeing in the mid 1890s they still did enjoy a puffed sleeve so that's why this type of cape was really quite popular this more cropped style cape and I have two capes here that I'm going to show you the other one is already laying out on the table they are both a very different cut as far as like circular semicircular etc they're a different cut like that they also have very different embellishments. So I wanted to kind of take you through these two capes to show you what really is possible with capes because frankly it's an accessory that is very functional and could be very very simple to make or it could get a lot more elaborate. So let's go ahead and start actually with the one that I have flat out on the table and I'm going to show you a lovely beaded velvet cape. We're going to take a look at this flat first and then we'll go ahead and put it on the dress form and you can see how it drapes. But this, as you can see, is a completely circular cape. So if I were to open this up flat, it would be one full flat circle just all the way around. We also really don't have any additional shaping with the neck. So it's not like the neck is coming up and being shaped, you know, into a collar or anything like that. It is literally circle, circle cut for neck slash in the front so that you can actually get it on and this one is made out of velvet this would of course be silk velvet and from here I don't think you can quite see the sparkle of these but this is actually all jet beading now a lot of jet beading has kind of dulled over time but I think you can see a little of that sparkle I am seeing a lot more sparkle here in person oh there that one's a little better but yeah all of this is jet beading and this is both front and back of the cape it's really beautiful just so much beading most of it is quite intact we do have a few areas like over here where some of the beading has come off and oddly enough we have some really large basting stitches right here as well so I don't know if someone had maybe planned to fix it at some point or those were just put in as like a stabilization but they do exist both here and also actually on the other side over here so it probably didn't actually have to do with the fixing since this one is still fully intact so again very very simple cut all we have here at the neckline is some binding once we get inside we'll really see how this becomes a little bit less simple inside because as far as the exterior goes this is actually all made out of just two pieces of velvet so I will flip this over but we have a seam that I don't think is showing up on camera right now right here I'll show you more when I flip it over to the back but that's it we've got one half circle one half circle made up into one full circle let me take you a little bit closer to this beading now some of this velvet has kind of gotten a little bit sparse over the years but again most of the beading is still pretty intact you can see though kind of how the velvet has become just a little bit holy in there it's still very very soft though one thing that makes me chuckle on this though is that the beading does not actually line up so right now i have the bottom edges lined up i have the top neckline basically lined up and the beading as you can see does not at all match I tried closing it maybe with like an overlap and if you overlap quite a bit then I suppose it would eventually line up but yeah it does not line up which kind of cracks me up 
let's take a look at the back. I've laid this side out flat so you can actually see what it looks like all the way around. I did actually forget that there was a little piece subbed in here. This is a very different texture of velvet. It is a lot smoother and silkier and softer than this velvet here, which just kind of feels older. Sorry, every time I put my hand in there, the contrast changes. But I think that this was maybe put in at some point. Maybe someone had a smaller neck and the binding was redone. Not sure, but it's definitely a different velvet than the rest of the cape. This is the seam that I mentioned before. We do have it kind of squinching up as can happen with velvet, no matter how careful you are. And of course we have all of our gorgeous beading here on the back. So look at that really huge semicircle there. And in fact, actually, if we lay it out all the way flat, you can see that these don't actually come all the way together as a full circle. There is like a little gap taken out just because the cape would otherwise be too full to go around. But look at that when we have it all laid out flat. That is gorgeous with all that beading. There's our sparkle. Okay, let's take a look inside. Inside actually greatly amuses me because of how much it is pieced. So this is all out of like a silk satin. That said, this panel and this panel where you can see it's kind of a different color, they do feel like a different texture as well. This is the kind that kind of almost wants to grab your hand as you run your hand across. This is a much flatter, more smooth, silk satin with a lot less luster in my opinion than these other pieces right here but as far as pieces go we have like one large piece there one really large piece over here and you can see the basting that came through from the other side as well another piece here this is a very strangely shaped piece here now this sort of line going through here i don't know if you can kind of see that on camera, but that is actually the center back seam. I don't know if that line is because someone actually marked it at some point and it's just kind of been there since, or if it was something that rubbed because it's thicker on the outside, but the seam here actually goes far past the seam here that's on the exterior. So we've got our piece here and our piece here, here, really large piece over here, and then one more piece over here and one tiny piece here where we have that other pieced in bit for the neckline. This is the exact same shape. Oh, actually this one is all one piece. There is no seam at the shoulder. So altogether that is eight pieces of satin inside to make up the lining because really no one's gonna see the lining. You might occasionally get a tiny little flip as something maybe flips from the outside or breezes open, but no one's gonna see it. So it's totally okay that it is pieced and it's nice and smooth so it's not gonna grab on to any clothing that you have underneath. You can also see that it doesn't quite make it to the front. Like maybe they were a little bit shy on the lining and so they didn't have it quite line up with the exterior. And actually same with other places over here around the circle where like the circle of the velvet is much better than the circle of the lining, but that is totally okay. So that's basically it for our first cape. As you can see, almost a complete full circle. And we have our gorgeous jet beading on the outside with this lovely gold lining from the inside. Oh, now it's sparkling. Okay, let's take a look at the other cape, which is quite a different shape. Here is our second cape, and as you can see, it is practically half of the first capes width around. We've got just over a half circle here. We do again have one seam here in the center back, but this one, the way that it's cut, actually allows for shoulder shaping as well. So this area right in here that I'm pushing up from, that is actually kind of shaped to go over the shoulder. And the way to get that shoulder shaping is because we actually have a dart that is hiding underneath the collar. So this one obviously does have a collar. We can see that right there. And the collar has its own seams to create shape. I'll show you those closer in a sec and is kind of gathered into the neckline. But if we flip up the collar, you can actually see that right here coming from the shoulder, we have a dart. So that is what is creating that shoulder shaping so that we get a little bit more room here than we do here. Again, sorry for that contrast issue. You can also see the gleam of the velvet on this cape, particularly under the collar where it's kind of been a little bit more protected, it really does gleam. So if we flip that collar back down and we want to take a look at the shaping of the collar itself, we have one seam right here in the center back and one seam here kind of 
almost part way through, like almost halfway through around. And again, the same thing on the other side here. So we have these little panels right here that are creating that nice tight shape in here. Let me try to get it away from the white paper so you can see that a little bit better. And then as you can see back here, it is also just kind of slightly gathered in order to get it actually into the neckline, which is amazing because it's pretty darn thick. In fact, this velvet is much thicker than the other velvet, and this one has a nap. Interestingly enough, I would have thought that on a cape you would want the nap to go this way so that if you run your hand this way, it would feel the smoothest. This cape works the opposite. It's actually smoother if you run your hand upwards. No idea why. Now the decorating on this cape comes in a few different forms. So obviously we have the fur trim here. I'm not sure what kind of fur this is and I get a little bit grossed out when I kind of speculate that it might be monkey fur to be honest. I know that that was a really popular decoration for them to use during this era but it does just creep me out that people would use monkey fur. And then we also have soutache. So all of this is hand applied soutache, which is really quite amazing. The soutache itself has not mostly discolored, like most of it is still black, but the thread and a little bit of the soutache has actually discolored to brown. So that's why we're seeing kind of multiple colors going on in this gorgeous soutache pattern. And then we do also have some of the jet beading. The beads on this one are cut significantly smaller. They're much smaller beads. And I think because of that, it actually reflects a lot more light. So this beading sparkles a lot more than the other beading. And the beading motif goes around and just kind of inserts itself in the middle of all of the soutache. I can't even imagine how long all of that would have taken to sew on. Honestly, same with the other cape since that one has a larger surface area. But yeah, that would have been a lot of work. So now that we've taken a look at the outside, let's go ahead and take a look at the lining side. This one actually has a pretty plain lining side. It is just polished cotton, not silk at all. And like the outside, it is cut into large pieces with a center back seam. However, this one does have a pocket, which is really, really fantastic. We've got a welt pocket right in there with its lovely stitches. I believe this is machine stitching around the welt pocket. I guess I didn't mention that on the other cape, all of the lining piecing, that was all hand sewn. But we do have a nice pocket. It's it's not too deep. This is about how far my hand can go in and it's deeper on this side than it is over here which I think is a little bit odd but maybe if you were to wear it maybe that would make sense. But it's deep enough that you could put more than just like a watch or coins in there. You could fit you know a little amount of stuff. So this does also have like the remnants of closures. Basically we have one eye left here. I assume that there would have been another eye here. It's possible maybe there could have even been some lower down but it makes the most sense to have at least the these two and then there would have been hooks over here those are no longer there if my camera adjusts we can also see here that the collar was actually finished separately with its own binding and then it was applied to the inside neckline of the capelet itself and that's part of I think really that gathering isn't so much as gathering as it is just trying to wrap itself into a smaller circle even though it's wider Something that I'm actually just realizing for the first time is that I think one of the reasons why this capelet is so heavy is because I think it's actually lined in leather. So I thought that this leather that was peeking out here was part of the monkey fur or whatever fur it is, but it's not. So the fur edge is separate from that leather bit inside and I stuck my finger kind of as far as I could inside which went to about here and that leather doesn't end it's not just like an edge a finish of the fur which was what I was thinking when I saw this before it actually just continues like I can get to about here and it continues at least that far with the leather and because it's the same thickness all the way through I think this is actually lined with a thin piece of leather so this really would have been very very warm to have the velvet and then leather as an interlining and then the cotton underneath that. You can also see the dart in the cotton here too just like we have it on the exterior in the velvet so that is again the shaping for the shoulders. So I think that's about everything with this capelet here laid out flat. Let me show you what the two look like on so that you can see the difference in these shapes. 
Here are the two side by side. You can see that this one does dip down a little bit lower in the front than this one and just kind of gives an overall more shaped look because of those shaped shoulders. Like personally, I think this one is a little more flattering than this one over here. This one, because it is so full, you can see that it just kind of like ripples itself along the body, whereas this one really doesn't. It hangs pretty nice and flat with then room for your arms to come down in this area right here. So I think that this shape is a bit more functional to be honest, but this shape is really easy to cut because you pretty much just have to cut a circle, so that's pretty cool. By the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but this one has no closures and no sign that there ever really were closures. So I don't know if this actually closed or if it just kind of rested on the shoulders. It's possible that because this was so full that it actually would have kind of had a better hang because there would have been more to hang forward. So that's what they look like in the front. Let me show you the sides and then the back. So the side view of the two, you can again see that this just is very ripply overall, whereas this kind of just hangs nicely and has room for your arm right here. It also dips down a little bit lower in the back than it is in the front, a little bit longer in the back than in the front. And of course it gives you more protection from the elements, not only because of the thickness, but because of the collar. So let's look at the back view. And here is our back view. Again, I just feel like this looks so much more functional like it just lays nicer and also it is a lot heavier so it does have that heft to it but this one is just in all of its little ripples and everything so I do find that kind of amusing. So there are two very different capes of a pretty darn similar era and honestly kind of similar embellishment. I hope that you have enjoyed this look at these two capes in my collection. These are also two of the earliest pieces in my collection. I don't remember exactly what year I got them in, but this one I think was actually my second piece ever as far as like antique collecting goes. And then this one I found a little while later. Both of them were from local antique stores. I have not worn either of them like out to something, even though I probably could. I mean, the nice thing about a cape is that all it really has to fit is the neckline. And frankly, like even if it doesn't quite fit here, you could, you know, close it here instead and it would still kind of work. That said, I would just worry about the embellishments or just taking care of them. As a general rule, I don't wear antiques. Like even if I could find, you know, a dress or something like that that actually fit me, which is basically impossible because of survival bias, I just don't feel comfortable wearing things that old because I would much rather help to preserve them than to like get any kind of thrill out of wearing them. Also, because capes are pretty darn easy to make, like obviously I am not gonna go through and jet bead a cape, like that's not gonna happen, but like you can make winter little capelets like this, especially these kind of full circle ones out of like Christmas tree skirts, which I've done before. So like, there's no need for me to really wear an antique when I could just wear a modern recreation and not have to worry about taking such intense care of the antiques. So that's why I keep them stored away in their acid-free boxes and tissue paper and then bring them out to share with you instead. And in fact, I have now shared almost my entire antique collection. I think there's something like five pieces left maybe and I am no longer actively collecting antique clothing because they take up a lot of space to store and I just don't have any more room for acid-free boxes. So that's why I've switched to American Girl Collecting instead. So I will be continuing this series with those other five or so pieces. Uh, maybe not every month because I'm kind of trying to space them out a little bit more since I am down to just a few now, but they will be coming. And if you want to check out other antique pieces that are in my collection, I do have those all linked in a playlist, which I will put right up here or also down below in the description so you can go check all of those videos out. There's a bunch. I probably have, um, I want to say maybe 30 something pieces in my collection. There might even be more videos. For a while I was doing that video series once every month. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. 
I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other costuming content like this out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Mirage, Laura, and Jean. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!